Jo had an abortion at age 21 when she didn't feel she could provide what was necessary emotionally or financially to raise a child on her own. Without legalized abortion, women will risk their lives to have the freedom to make decisions about their bodies and the way they live their lives. Prior to 1821, abortion was legal in all 50 states. The campaign to criminalize abortion came from many directions. One point of view was pushback against the emerging women's rights movement. The demand for birth control was a threat to male dominance. Restricting abortion was part of an effort to control women and confine them to the traditional childbearing role. It was also a way for men in the newly established medical profession to wrest control over the highly profitable business of childbirth from midwives, whom they condemned for performing abortions. In the mid-1800s, a coalition of male doctors backed by the American Medical Association, the Catholic Church, and sensationalist newspapers began to campaign for the criminalization of abortion. By the turn of the century, this coalition had largely succeeded in limiting women's medical choices. Restricting abortion was one way the male physicians could assert clear authority over their female patients. Racism played a large part in the movement against abortion as well. White men were concerned by shifting ethnic and racial dynamics in the United States, worrying that the low birth rate of U.S.-born white Protestant women would lead to racial inferiors and un-American immigrants overrunning the country. The U.S. government and the eugenics movement were concerned about race suicide and wanted white Protestant women to have more children. Despite the legal prohibitions, women continued to have abortions. While there were providers who practiced safely, finding one often depended upon a woman's economic situation, her race, and where she lived. For the most part, they were either at the mercy of incompetent practitioners, unable to find anyone who performed the procedure, or forced to resort to dangerous self-abortions. The text composing the portrait is made up of two documents. The first is the statute from the bylaws of the state of Connecticut from 1821 that was the first state to ban abortions. The second document is the Comstock Laws of 1873, which was the first federal law to address abortion. This act criminalized the use of the U.S. Postal Service to send items related to abortion.